Welcome guys to another episode with the Doomed Hell. This is my third <laughs> recording of this video, but uh, today I wanted to make a follow-up video of the GPU buying guide 2023. Um, this will be the CPU slash platform buying guide for 2023. It's really going to make a big overview of what CPU, motherboard, and RAM you should buy for each platform. And it is really a sequel video of the uh, CPU buying guides that I've made in the past and the CPU bottlenecking videos that I've made. So in this video, I want you guys to keep in the back of your mind uh, some gaming platforms, pros and cons. I've kind of made a list and green is the pros, red is the cons. Uh, DDR4 versus DDR5, which one should you go for? We're not going to talk about DDR3 right now and I'll try to explain about that a little bit. How many cores should you get? Uh, we're going to look at tier budgets, so how much you spend for what kind of budget you want. And another aspect is what else you're going to do with that computer. And that goes into like operating systems and other applications, things like that. Now, things to consider before looking at this video. Uh, buy in the cities. If you're going to buy any kind of like used or new, even new gaming computers, do try to look into cities. Uh, if you have a city nearby, go to that. We're talking Toronto. Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal. Uh, that's pretty much the number one thing you could do. For pre-built gaming, uh, I definitely suggest looking very close to that because it allows you to build a computer in literally less than a day and uh, having basically like modern day performance. So that's something to look at. Uh, overclocking rigs. So if you have like 50 bucks to spend on a, uh, on a computer, like 50 extra bucks over like a normal computer I would definitely suggest looking into overclocking so a little bit of overclocking wisdom can go a long way it could give you 5% 10% uh, performance increase finally is looking at uh, CPU motherboard RAM packages hand-me-downs eBay deals all that stuff that juicy stuff will be very advantageous for you so that when you do buy used uh, you will save quite a lot of money and also, find another thing is HDT platforms. Should you get HDT or should you go stay with casual? Another thing you should look at. So, uh, keep in mind we're just looking at CPU and platform uh, prices. Uh, these prices do not include GPUs, and that's because they will pretty much work with any modern GPU today. Uh, so, we have a nine box table here. We're going to get into all of that, and we also have a couple of links that will be useful for this video. So we have a low end, mid range and high end. The low end is really the cheapest. It goes from 250 to 400. Then we have 350 to uh, 700 and then finally 700 to brand new. Uh, now, in the low end, we have really a guy who just wants to spend a bit of cash to buy a computer that you know does everything, Windows machine, can play Fortnite, whatever it may be. I believe the cheapest and best deal, although with a little bit of uh, sketchiness involved uh buying a dell optiplex with an i5 or i7 uh sixth seventh or eighth gen will be an excellent deal especially the eighth gen you're getting six cores 12 threads and you're getting uh like very recent uh cash speed cash speed is super important for uh running ram very fast and running ram very fast means more fps buying an, a dell optiplex any of the kind that you can find buying a power supply used new doesn't really matter and buying a very small uh case or you know medium-sized case for 20 30 bucks sometimes 40 bucks and it will work for any gpu and this will allow you to to game on a platform that only costs you 250 bucks it will come with ram it will even come with storage sometimes and it'll allow you to run any gpu you want and it'll be excellent for gaming low-end gaming of course uh, negatives is that obviously uh, you're not going to have that many PCIe lanes. You're not necessarily going to have M.2 support, uh, and there's no real overclocking on most of these boards. It's really finicky to work on that, and so it's just not worth it usually. But the advantage is it's super cheap. It is literally so cheap. Like you could buy one of these for like 100, 120 bucks, 150 bucks, and you'll get quad core. If you pay a little bit more, like 200 dollars, you can get a six core, and it's just it just runs everything you want. So that's an excellent deal going one up and here the middle section here i would call that the meta or the you know the what you might the mainstream buy uh the ryzen 1700 or 2700 build is really what i would look at as a low-end 
mainstream build, something that's easy to do, that takes minimal research, and will really give you a, a, a very good experience for gaming. Uh, so you would start with buying an X370, B450, or X470 motherboard, and you would get some cheap DDR4 RAM, 2X8 is just fine, a power supply case, and any peripherals you'd like, and the total price will probably be around $350. So that's incredible. $100 more, you get eight cores, you get four gigahertz overclocking, which is totally doable on any of these motherboards, and you get uh, usually a little bit more RAM, but of course you don't get a hard drive with that deal. Now, for all of these boards, uh, for, sorry, for all of these deals, uh, I will not consider hard drives. Obviously, the only deal you might get a hard drive is with Opt Optiplex. So that's totally fine. Now, power supply, it can be anything you want. That's another advantage. So what do you get? You get overclocking cores, and you get a linear CPU upgrade to something that is a lot more modern. A 5500 or a 5700X will usually just be plug and play into your B450, X470, X370 motherboard. And that's incredible because it allows you to really get uh, a really cheap platform you start with a really cheap platform and eventually you could get a lot more performance out of it if you have hundred dollars two hundred dollars to spare uh, when that time comes a seventeen hundred sometimes a twenty seven hundred will only come at fifty dollars so it is really really cheap to get one of these cpus but the real uh, problem with this over like an optiplex is that you actually do have to do some research and it is totally do it your own so you have to buy this uh, off a used guy and you have to figure out what fits with what and also the upgrade path is, is something you might want to research so with x370 b450 or x470 board some of them don't have bioses that support newer boards like these are re like really cheap bio uh, re really cheap motherboards like micro super micros and things like that uh, some of them will support newer CPUs, but they're going to be really bad in terms of overclocking. The VRMs won't support it. It'll heat up. Some of them might even pop if you try to overclock uh, these newer and more uh, uh, wattage demanding uh, CPUs. So that is something you're going to have to research. Now, I have a great guide right here for uh, whatever boards that have and their VRMs. And what you basically want to look for is a board that has enough uh, juice to support a 5900X uh, with overclocking. If it does support a 5900X with overclocking, you're going to have a plentiful of uh, walking room when you get a 5700, 5800, 5900X for overclocking um, once you do upgrade. And that'll be excellent for you. But again, you have to do that research. It's not super easy. Now, for the low end, if you really want to like cheap out, but you want to get maximum performance, like basically brand new gaming performance, I suggest getting a C three seventy or Z three ninety i nine a bundle. An i nine ninety seven hundred K will be just fine, but a ninety nine hundred K, especially the F's, which don't have an iGPU, will overclock incredibly well. Buying B die or uh, you know expensive Hynix two X eight gigabytes DDR four will be excellent. And this is going to be specifically because you're going to be able to overclock this thing to uh, 4,000 megahertz very easily with very low latency, and that'll be excellent for you. However, you will have to you will need a 850 watt power supply, but we're talking about uh, you know $50, $80 power supply, and a cheap case will be fine. What you get out of this deal is you get very big overclocks. We're talking 5.1 gigahertz minimum, 5.3 gigahertz if you're really lucky. Uh, you're going to get more cores than your uh, you know, Optiplex build. You're going to get Thunderbolt. Sometimes it'll be a Thunderbolt header. Sometimes it'll be on the board, actually. And you get some a very good min-max for gaming. The disadvantage is that you don't get a real upgrade path, but does it really matter? I mean, you're really getting like modern gaming performance. It's not like the Ryzen build where you're going to struggle a little bit in some uh, CPU-intensive games. And the price is around $400 for that, which is incredible. Really, really uh, beneficial for a lot of people uh, and there is something that is in between uh, the optiplex and the z370 and is to get the z170 or z270 board now those boards don't officially support coffee like cpus and and you know you know how it is like six core cpus but with simple mods which you can find right here uh, this is a thread that talks about it uh, and they use a maximus z170 board here uh, you are able to run a uh, 9700K or a 9900K on your Z170 board. That's incredible. 
Now, I wouldn't do it on any board. I would do it on a more high-end board. But because they're usually cheaper than your Z370 and Z390 boards, it is really worth it if you're willing to put in a little bit more effort in your wisdom and um, obviously your DIY. So this is something that I would consider really good for the majority of gamers. And um, it, it trades blows with the next uh, min-max that, that we're going to look at, which is in the mid-range. And this is to get straight up an i3-12100 uh, CPU. Now, this is a non-K uh, non CPU, which means it's not technically overclockable. It doesn't have those like kind of features. But using BCLK uh, overclocking, you're able to kick it to overdrive in 5.3 gigahertz. That is incredible for gaming. And it has been done multiple times. There's many benchmarks that show off its performance. And it is 100% worth it because it will give you basically the same performance as a modern day a uh, mid-range i5 CPU. That's incredible. So what I would suggest is buying one of these on eBay for about a hundred bucks, then buying a Z690 DDR4 motherboard, which would cost you about two hundred dollars, and then getting some, uh, you know, budget 2x8 gigabytes DDR4 RAM. It won't overclock the RAM so good, so don't worry about what kind of RAM you take. Obviously, you could try running Hynix uh, and try to see like if 3800 can run but I don't know what that motherboard is gonna have in terms of BIOS, so it might not be great to overclock. So don't even worry about that. What you get in the end is you get just the same modern gaming performance. You don't get the cores, but that's fine because they're really big cores on the 12th and 13th gen. And you have an actual upgrade path. So if eventually you do wanna put in a new i5, uh, you know, or you know, a new, a new i7 if you wanted to even, it would be totally doable. Now, obviously your, your uh, main, uh, problem would probably be the motherboard it might not have the uh, vrms you might want for overclocking you know a 24 core cpu but that's totally fine because at at this range you have a pretty much exactly the same gaming performance that's really what's important here disadvantages obviously is the board you don't get the pcie lanes you might not get the thunderbolt things like that and of course it's gonna be very hard to overclock much harder than you know getting a z370 z390 board there's you know, BCLK is very finicky and very weird. And so that's why right here, I have the uh, official uh, thread for uh, how to overclock non-K CPUs on uh, LGA 1700. So that even works for Z790 if you wanted to. Now, if you want a bit more performance, something closer to your, you know, 3600K, that's totally doable. And you could just get an i5-12400 or even a 13th gen, I don't know what they're called, but you could try to get a 13th gen, no problem, and you could totally do this. And it would cost you about 350 bucks, maybe a little more, depending on, you know, your deal you might get. But it's a little cheaper than the 9th gen, which is what's important. Trades blows with basically that uh, Maximus plus a, a 9th gen, like I was saying. Now for the mainstream, so what what would you get if you're a mainstream guy and you're just trying to buy a uh, mid range, well, actually like modern performance uh, CPU, but something that doesn't necessarily have an upgrade path and something that's probably DDR4 era. And this is where you get into the B550 and the X570 boards. So these pretty much out the gate have all the VRMs you might want for uh, a modern day eight core Ryzen 5000, which is totally acceptable. Uh, with this build, you might have to do some research, but with B550, it's most of them will support it out the gate, no problem. You buy a 5700X or a 5800X 3D. The 5800X doesn't really make sense because of the price difference, but the 5700X is extremely good because you will buy them for 170 uh, to $200, uh, eight cores, modern day IPC, all that kind of stuff. You buy cheap DDR4 RAM, and guess what? You got an amazing modern uh, gaming setup with the 5700x I strongly suggest overclocking it it'll do 4.7 4.8 gigahertz no problem uh, with a 5800x 3d it'll give you pretty much the same performance without any overclocks and then there's extra stuff you could do so right here I have a BCLK uh, overclocking guide and it's a little bit tougher than uh, this nano K overclocking because um, the 5800x 3d is like basically locked for no overclocking but what you could do is you could do under under volting which is really similar to how you do with gpus so it's pretty incredible you could do that and it will give you like five to seven percent more uh you know headroom for for gaming which is incredible and uh you know there's a bunch of other things you could do so i definitely suggest the 5800 x3d if you're looking for uh, ddr4 era amd uh 
So another advantage with this build would be that it's very easy to do and you could buy new parts no problem. Right now there's Black Friday day, uh, deal and uh, a lot of the, these parts are cheap so I would definitely look into that. And uh, the disadvantages is obviously this is still DDR4 gen so you don't get any of that bandwidth, that, that juicy bandwidth. Uh, you're not going to find PCIe 5, that doesn't exist here. And you're going to be very disappointed if you're looking for a Thunderbolt. So these are small, very small grains to nitpick at. And to be honest, for $500 to $700, this is really worth it uh, as a, you know, used to new uh, gaming rig to start with. And it'll run pretty much everything you throw at it. 40 90 no problem. Now, if you want to get a bit more technical, but get basically the same performance, even better in some cases, I would look at getting it Z490 or Z590 platform. Now, this platform has pretty much its whole life been underrated. Uh, everyone hated on it, but to be honest, what it gives you over the 9th gen is it gives you a little bit more IPC in the 10th gen and quite a lot more IPC with the 11th gen, and it gives you 10 cores or really big 8 cores, like modern day 12th gen 8 cores, and that's incredible. Now, on top of that, it has exactly the same overclocking headroom as 9th gen, so you could do 5.1 gigahertz with the, uh, the 10850K, uh, and you could do 5.3 gigahertz with the 10900K, which is incredible for a 10 core. With the 11700K, it's about the same story, 5.1 gigahertz. And with the 11900K, I've seen it up upwards of 5.4 gigahertz, and that's crazy high. With this platform, the savings you will make, you'll be able to get Hynix 2x16 gigabytes, and the overclocking will be much better than the uh, Ryzen 5000. We're talking about easy, easy 4000 megahertz once again. Obviously, with uh, Z390, you could do basically the same thing, but with uh, Z590, it actually does like a dual, what do you call that, dual rank uh, uh, 16 gigabytes very well, much better than with a Z390. And so you don't necessarily need B die, for instance. You don't need like good B die, let's say. Uh, you just really need like okay Hynix uh, bins and it'll do it just fine. That's a benefit over Ryzen 5000, which again, Ryzen 5000, it's better for overclocking than your, you know, previous AM4s. But again, you're gonna be like limited by the, the motherboard you give it and uh, the IMC is gonna be finicky again. So you don't, here you don't really need that RAM, but here, it's not that you need it, it's that it's gonna be really beneficial. It'll actually be able to use it and in gaming, it won't give you any like problems. But you will need an 850 watt PSU. That's the real issue. So you get more cores, uh, even based off of like, you know, Ryzen. You get Thunderbolt pretty much on, on most of these boards. These are really quality boards. Uh, and you get more PCIe lanes. You also get Gen 4 on like pretty much all the boards. So there's a lot of advantages in Z490, Z590, but there is one big issue. It's lots of heat, even stock. So what's suggested to do, and I have it right here, is to delid or liquid metal or direct die your, your CPU. So with the 9th gen and 8th gen, it is definitely doable and you will get a little bit of performance gains, uh, better overclocking slightly, you know, 200 megahertz, let's say. But with Z490, Z590, I mean, in today's games, it is really worth it. It will get you, you know, upwards of 10% uh, gaming performance, uh, especially with the memory overclocking, which is really uh, surprising. With 11th gen, like an 11th 900K, it can even do 5.5 gigahertz on a really good setup. So if you're considering getting, you know, a custom liquid loop setup, no matter what uh, platform you go with, or if you're looking at an AIO, you found a really cheap AIO, 360 mil, 240 mil, no problem. I would definitely look into this and try to see if you could get one of these. Because with Ryzen, it just won't matter what, what, what heatsink you give it. So this will be around 500 bucks. Now, it, it could go much bigger. Uh, me personally, I'm looking at like 700 bucks um, because I want to get a uh, Z590 OC formula and then I found some B die and stuff like that. So this is kind of the the one I'm interested in right now. And just that's just because I have a little bit more money than if I wanted to go with ninth gen. So now we're looking at high end and high end has a lot of interesting features, uh, but most of it is new stuff. Now, before we strike the new stuff out, let's just talk about uh, HDT for a second. So I believe, you know, X79, X99 and all those things are still relevant today as a DDR3 era. But I believe personally that if you want like modern gaming performance, 
X299 is the way to go. If you want a little bit more workstation wise, X399 is a little better. I would buy all this stuff on eBay. And the reason why you would go HEDT is not so much the gaming, it's more about the uh, workstation applications you might deliver on. So you get a lot more big cores with uh, HEDT. Uh, you get close to 3900K, uh, um, sorry, close to 3900K, uh, HED, sorry, sir. I mean, uh, workstation uh, benchmark uh, performance. And with X399, I mean, it's out the gate. You, you basically, you could do like 30 virtual machines, no problem. It's something that the 3900K will not even do. So that's an advantage. Now with the motherboard, you get, you're basically the PCIe king. You got plenty of, of uh, space for either your U.2s, your uh, Hyper M.2s, this stuff like with regular casual uh, motherboards, you can't really do. Uh, here you have Gen 4, so you could do Hyper M.2, no problem. With X570, just forget about it. You don't even have uh, Gen 4, I'm pretty sure. So you're just gonna be screwed. So with HEDT, you got those advantages. You get quad channel RAM, which means your bandwidth, like even DDR4 bandwidth will be very close or even higher than DDR5, which is amazing. Uh, with X299, for instance, if you get EVGA, you can run uh, 4x8 or 4x16, and you could do DDR4 4,000 megahertz, which is incredible, and it will give you, uh, you know, high-end DDR5 bandwidth, which is great. With with uh, DDR4 latency as well. Uh, on pretty much all the boards, sorry, on pretty much all the nice boards, you will also get Thunderbolt, and you will get 10 gig LAN, which is something you you forget about it. Everything else won't even have it. So for basically the same price as uh, your Ryzen 5000 and Z590, you get a lot of workstation stuff, but you sacrifice something, which is gaming performance. So even on a good day, X299 uh, overclocked with a D-Lit or, or, and a direct die will only give you uh, a 7940X or 7960X about five gigahertz. And that sounds really incredible, but to be honest, that's about the same gaming performance as a 9700K, 9900K on a good day. On a bad day, you're screwed uh, with a Threadripper. Threadripper, if you get a 1950X, uh, you're really unlucky. You're gonna get about a 2700X uh, gaming performance. Now, it doesn't sound that bad, but to be honest, when you're paying the same price as Ryzen 5000, Z590, it might not be worth it for most people. And uh, with Threadripper especially, a lot of these like second gen, uh, like Threadripper 2950X, 2990, WX, these kinds of CPUs, which have a lot of cores, I mean, forget about it. That gaming performance is out the gate. Doesn't even matter anymore. And these CPUs will be very expensive because a lot of people are looking for them, but there's not, they never sold that many. So, you know, supply and demand. I would definitely suggest going for X299 if you're looking for more gaming applications. You'll get an EVGA X299, or uh, there's even the Designair EX, which sometimes are broken, but uh, you could try to fix that. That's another thing you could do. And this is a very good min max if you're looking for purely a uh, workstation environment that can also play a couple games. Uh, another big disadvantage that I just talked about was the D-Lid. So I don't know how D-Lid works for Threadripper. I think it, I, I believe it is possible, but with X299, it's pretty much necessary if you're gonna game or if you're gonna try to do any overclocking. So that's something to consider as well. And I think you would wanna do that because again, uh, if you're looking at like 13900K, uh, or 13700K even, uh, the performance like stock for stock is worse on HEDT, so it becomes not really worth it. But I would consider it quite worth it if you can buy a uh, rig for 500 to $700, that's just the platform, we don't even care about the GPU. And of course you get just a lot more DDR4, you could just run on it, which is great. So that's pretty much all the used stuff. Now let's talk about like the used slash new, mostly new, and that's the uh, brand new gens. So i5, uh, if you're buying Intel right now, I would consider buying an i5 13600K, uh, 3700K or 4700K would also be pretty good. But the, 13, uh, the 13600K is really the minimum I would buy uh, brand new. Obviously, like we're not even talking about non-K because this pretty much covers it. So if you are buying a 13600K, uh, you're buying like cheap DDR4 Z690, motherboard which is similar to this one and you're basically going with like cheap ddr4 maybe even ddr5 if you wanted to 
uh, it would cost you about $600 and obviously you could run it for pretty much all the games it'll work just fine but it'll cost you six hundred dollars with and that's not with tax so you have to be careful it'll probably be closer to six uh seven fifty let's say and of course this could go from you know six hundred all the way up to like a thousand twelve hundred dollars even more if you're going for like you know thirteen nine hundred k eatx uh, motherboard etc etc super expensive with ryzen if you're going with amd uh i would suggest going minimum seventy six hundred some people like the seventy seven hundred x and anything higher than that, I mean, it's really, really uh, important that you look at Intel's side and see which one is better in what application. Now, uh, the reason why I put Intel first and mainstream, let's say, is because you get DDR4 support. So if you were running like a DDR4 era uh, computer or if you get a nice deal on DDR4, I mean, just go with Intel. It's just a better deal. But if you have uh, if you're just going brand new and you do want DDR5, Ryzen makes a lot of sense. Uh, for the first time now, you can overclock past 5 gigahertz with Ryzen. And we're talking with a 7700X, we're talking 5.5 gigahertz. It's incredible. And to be honest, uh, the DDR5 on Ryzen is, is fine. It's finicky, not as good as uh, Intel in terms of overclocking and all that. But it seems as though it uses DDR5 a little bit more efficiently than Intel, which is really interesting. So if you do build a minimum spec, I believe the 7600 with a cheap motherboard, a B650, would get you, would knock you out around $650 with, with the tax. No, sorry, without the tax. So it is a little bit more expensive than Intel, but really uh, the real argument is like, do you want to stick with DDR4? If you don't, maybe get an AMD. If you do, but you want to get that, that those extra cores, maybe Intel still makes sense. That's kind of how I look at it. And obviously overclocking get in, gets into that, but you know, you don't have to look at overclocking too, too close right now because in the future, in the near future, um, DDR5, we will understand the patterns better and it'll become easier to bin DDR5. And so DDR5 will, will have uh, better kits in the near future. So that's something to consider. So there it is. We pretty much talked about all the main features of all these boards and all these platforms. Uh, if you are looking for something cheaper, uh, I mean, it is, it's okay. You could do that. But again, I believe DDR4 right now is the meta. It's something you should look into because a lot of these old uh, computers are getting sold off just because they're using DDR4. So it is really worth getting into that. And if you're buying new, it's really just because you want that blingy, a shininess, um, and even if you were buying new, I would still consider Ryzen 5000 to be something to look into very, very strongly. Let's look at pretty at the uh, websites I, I talked about uh, once again, and then I'll end the video here. So Z170, Z270 upgrades. So there's uh, you know Z170 uh, OC formulas I've seen, uh, Maximus. I've also seen some gigabyte boards that were able to do this, uh, but you could probably do it with MSI as well. So I would consider this to be pretty interesting if you want to get into uh, kind of a more uh, enthus enthusiast build, a uh, very special build, a hacker build. Uh, if you want to run B450, B, uh, X470, just know that some of these boards are literally like na for namesake on the 400. Some of them are actually uh, X370 boards. And so you can get a pretty good deal on an X370, although I have not seen that many uh, out in the wild, which is kind of weird. But yeah, again, you don't with 5000, don't get anything higher than a 5900X. And even the 5900X, it's almost the same price as the 5800X3D. So the X3D makes more sense overall, but I would personally get a, a 5900X just because I do like more cores. Uh, then we have the Intel CPUs, DLID, liquid metal, direct die. So all that topic, there's many videos that are excellent to talk about. Here I got a nice guide and a uh, forum that talks about it on overclock. And uh, to be honest, it's really doable on pretty much anything Intel. And apparently on Ryzen 7000, you can start doing it, which is really cool. Uh, with the non-KOC, something I forgot to say is that with, uh, let's say, for instance, uh, if you got 6th, 7th, or 8th gen uh, Intel, and you got a Z170 board, Z270 board, you can still overclock with BCLK, so just like uh, the 12th gen. And so that's, that's something you could consider doing if you are on the low end and you don't want to run a ninth gen, but you do have a Z170 board or a, 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 some sort of hand-me-down board I'm talking about. 
Uh, so it might be worth overclocking. You might get, you know, four gigahertz, sometimes 4.5 gigahertz if you're lucky. And that will get you some pretty nice gaming performance, you know, something I wouldn't cons I wouldn't knock out of the table. And yeah, finally, the 5800X3D is BCLK overclockable. The brand new 7000 uh, 3D uh, CPUs have had burning issues. And so I wouldn't consider that like a good buy at this very moment. But if you could get a deal on a 7600X3D, they're actually overclockable. So that'd be pretty interesting what, what you could do with it. Apparently, the uh, six cores become eight cores, eight cores become 12 cores, etc., etc. Pretty cool stuff if you want to get into that, you know, try it if you want i guess so that's pretty much it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video um you know it took me not super long to compile this but again if this is something you really enjoy and you want to get into more or you want to understand how gpu guides work and stuff like that do check out my uh channel i know it's a little schizo how it's like you know i got weird videos and things like that uh i don't know what it says about my uh <laughs> personal problems but it's not really about that it's just i have uh, a lot of a lot of uh ideas and uh you know I'm a, I'm a recently graduated student so i don't have time to like you know make hash out scheduled videos and such but i hope you guys enjoyed and please subscribe have a good day